Today in our 2009 Honda Fit, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Roadmaster Universal High Power Diode Wiring Kit, part number RM-154. Now whenever we're towing our Fit behind our motorhome, our diodes are going to allow us to have the signal transferred into the factory lights, so when we're driving down the road, everyone knows whether we're stopping or changing lanes. Not only are the diodes going to transfer that signal, but they're also going to protect our vehicle's wiring from any kind of backfeeding that may arise on the motorhome end. One of the best things about our diodes is that it's going to be a permanent one-time installation. We're not going to have to worry about those magnetic lights that you typically see running the wire from the back all the way to the front of the vehicle and having to worry about scratches when we're driving down the road. So now that we've seen how our diodes work, let's show you how to get them installed. Now to begin your installation, going to want to start at the front and we have a spot on our base plate that's going to mount our electrical connector to. So I made sure to leave myself enough excess and then we're going to route our four pole wire all the way to the back of the tail lights. Now I routed mine across the base plate and went up into the engine compartment. Then I brought it up, went around the battery here and then I ran it as close to the firewall as I could and I dropped it underneath. So once I had it drop down below, I had it come close to the firewall and went over this brace, just zip tying it along the way, went underneath this cover here, started following some of these lines, and then since there's really not a good spot to tie anything to here, I went over the subframe brace and I went underneath this center panel until I could reach it behind the back of the bumper here. So now we're going to need to move up top so we can remove the tail lights and test all of our wiring. In order to remove the tail light, we're going to have to open up our hatch and move to the inside and there's going to be a panel right here that will give us access. So we can grab a flat blade screwdriver and there's going to be a small notch in between the panel and the rest of the interior panels. You're just going to want to pop that panel out. We can set it aside, and if we look inside of here, we're going to have a total of three nuts that are holding the tail light in place. So we'll grab an eight millimeter socket, and we're going to loosen those bolts up so that we can pull our tail light out. Now there is going to be one right at the top, right where that panel meets. It is going to be a little bit difficult to see. Once we have all those removed, we can pull our tail light out. And once we have our tail light assembly pulled away a little bit, we're going to come to our electrical connectors. We're going to turn them counterclockwise and remove the bulbs. And some of them may be a little bit difficult to reach in. The smaller one, this is going to be our reverse light. Maybe a little bit hard, but if you reach in, you can turn it. And we'll set the assembly aside and do the same thing for the passenger side. So on the bottom bulb, this clear larger bulb, that's going to be our tail light and our brake signal. So we're going to want to cut this tape away so we can get access to the wires inside. Whenever you do, when you cut it, you want to be extra careful not to damage the wires inside the tape though. Just peel back enough of the tape so we can get access to the wires with a little bit more working on it. We're going to push in on that gray tab and pull the connector out from the bulb itself and we'll put the bulb aside. That way we can test our wires without actually damaging them. We can just test by checking the pins inside the plug. So I have my circuit tester here and you're going to want to isolate each function you're testing. So right now I have my tail lights on, but nobody's pressing on the brake and my turn signals are off. So then we can go through, probing each one, checking for the signal. So the end one here is going to have our signal. And if we come to the back, it's going to be this brownish gray colored wire. Now we're going to go through and check each one to see which one is our brake signal.
looks like it's going to be the center pin. So it's going to be the green colored wire coming out of that connector. And we're going to want to verify all the same things on the passenger side as well. So we went ahead and tested the wires over on the passenger side and we found that they had the same color wires and the same functions. Now the end of our wiring here, I'm going to cut the four pole off because we're not going to be using this connector. And cut it as close as I can to the connector so I don't have to waste too much wire. Now you're going to want to split your wire as far up to where the last anchor point is. So we have four separate wires. So now that the wires are separated, I went ahead and took an airline tube and I ran it between the body here and the bumper so that I can meet up with the wires down below. Now you can use whatever you have available even if it is just a coat hanger. You just want something that's going to have some structure when you go to push it. So we can find the other end of our airline tube that comes out the bottom and we're going to take the yellow, brown, and white wires and we're going to attach it to our airline tube. Use some electrical tape. And we're going to pull all the wire and all the excess up top. And once you pull all this up, you want to double check underneath to make sure the wire is not wrapped around anything or going to cause any issues down the road. So we're going to start with our white wire. Now this is going to be our ground wire. So we're going to attach this to the body of the vehicle here. So I'm going to trim off the excess. And we're going to strip back the end. Then we can take the included ring terminal in our kit, slide it over the wire and crimp it down. Then we can grab a self-tapping screw and a 5 16 driver. We're going to drill this right into the sheet metal of the car. When you tighten down your ground wire, you want to make sure that it's nice and secure and that that ring terminal isn't moving. We're going to need to splice into our factory wiring here. Now since we don't have a lot of room and a lot of wire, we're going to go ahead and extend each one of these wires. So we'll come down a little bit from the plug, we'll cut the gray tail light wire, we're going to strip back both ends. I'm going to take a blue heat shrink buck connector, now these are not included in the kit, but you can pick them up here at eTrailer.com. Now the reason why we're using heat shrink buck connectors is it's going to give us a connection point between two wires, but it's also going to keep out any kind of moisture or debris and hopefully prevent any kind of corrosion buildup. So we'll slide the bare end over one end, crimp it down, and we'll do the same thing for the other side. Double check them. Just give them a quick tug, make sure that wire is nice and tight in there. And since this is going to be our tail light circuit, I'm going to take just a little bit of brown wire. I'll strip back one end. I'm going to put it into one of my buck connectors and crimp it down. And we'll do the same thing for the other side. Now as you can see that gives us a lot more room here and whenever we do make our connections we can tuck all the excess wire back inside and it will be hidden out of the way. We're going to repeat that same process for our green wire and for video demonstrations we're going to use a different color wire so it's easier to keep track of everything. I'm going to use a heat gun to shrink down my connectors but if you are using an open flame just be sure not to burn or char the wires or the connectors. So we're going to start with our green wire, which we extended into yellow, which is going to be our brake signal. So we're going to strip back both ends of the extension. We're going to grab one of our diodes that has all blue spade terminals on them, and we're going to take two of them off. And we're going to crimp one connector onto each end of the wire. We'll pull the last one off, 
And if we pay attention to our diode, it's going to have two in and one out. The wire that's going to be closest to the plug itself is going to go to the out terminal. And the other side of the wire can go into either one of the in terminals. Then we'll take our yellow wire coming from up underneath. We're going to make sure we have enough room, so I'll just kind of make a loop here. Estimate about how much wire we need. I'll cut back the excess and strip the end. We'll take the last spade terminal and we'll slide it over the wire. And we'll crimp it in place. That's going to go to the last inside our diode. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing for our two taillight circuits. However, we're going to want to grab the diode that has the yellow connector on it. We're going to pull both blue terminals off and crimp them on the ends of our brown wires. Again, the one closest is going to go on the out terminal. The one farthest away is going to go on the in terminal. So we cut our brown wire, estimating about how much we need, except we're going to hold on to the excess and we're going to strip back both ends of our brown wire. This time we're going to take both ends, we're going to combine them together. And we'll take our large yellow spade terminal, slide it over the end, and crimp it in place. And that's going to get plugged into the other end terminal on our taillight diode. Now for the excess brown wire, we're going to want to send this back down through the body and the bumper here so we can meet up with the green wire and go over to the passenger side. So we ran our brown wire, we came back underneath the bumper here, met up with the green wire, ran it across, then came out, and then used the same method to get the wire up to the tail lights and connect everything. And we'll eventually come back down underneath here and tie up all our wires so they're not so close to our exhaust. And over here on the passenger side, we went ahead and extended our wires as well and hooked them up the same way we did on the driver's side. So we tucked all our excess wire back inside the body here and then used the double-sided tape on the back of the diodes to stick it to the inside of the body. So we can put the light back on to our pigtail. We're going to make sure you hear that click. And then we can plug all of our lights back in. So you want to make sure you get them all in the correct spot. And again, it is going to be a little bit of a tight fit, just like it was to start with. I'm just going to turn all the bulbs in clockwise. So we did the same thing over on the driver's side of where we put the diodes, then we can put our taillights back in place. And with both of our taillights back in place, we can put the covers back on. So we came back, and underneath the bumper here, we took some of the zip ties, including our kit, doubled them up, and went around the bumper beam, and made sure that none of our wires are hanging down too low. We did the same thing over here on the passenger side, we actually use the zip tie to go through a couple holes in the frame there. That way it'll be as far away from the exhaust as possible. Next we're going to go ahead and test it. So we took the umbilical, plugged it into the front, and then into our tester. Now you can plug it into your motorhome to make sure everything's working properly, but we're going to be using this tester here. So if I turn my tester on, you can see that the tail lights are working, as well as the left turn signal, our brake lights, and our right turn signal. That'll finish up your look at the Roadmaster Universal High Powered Diode Wiring Kit, part number RM-154 on our 2009 Honda Fit.